Hey guys, how's it going, Electron Man? Check it out. Look what Santa Claus brought me. Man, I'm just all tickled about it. I got one of these new uh, MFJ 993B automatic antenna tuners. I have an old uh, AT11 tuner, but uh, one thing, it doesn't have memories in it. This one is so cool, it will actually, after it'll learn what bands you like to go to, and instead of having to go through the whole retune process, it will actually know that band and it'll just set to that tuning automatically as soon as you put that frequency in. Let me go and power it up, kind of you kind of see the display. It's also got some other cool features to it. Obviously, it's also got an uh, analog meter built into it, as well as it's got the uh, forward and reflected power and the frequency that you're tuned on, uh, as well as it's got two antennas, so you can switch from antenna one to antenna two right there. And then uh, you also got modes where you can have it to where it's just your RF power there with your frequency. And then uh, I think that's SWR there with just your frequency. And then uh, there's your, uh, that's your actually capacitance that you're loading your antenna. They give you all the details of how you got your antenna tuned. And then we're back to the, the original one, which gives you uh, forward power, reflected power. So it gives you power, SWR, and frequency. Pretty cool, isn't it? And uh, I love the lit meter. Nice looking little rig, right, guys? I mean, uh, how can you not appreciate that? One heck of a nice uh, Santa present, I have to say. Thank you, wife. And uh, anyway, we're going to go ahead and open it up. I can't help it, especially the MFJ stuff. I love MFJ stuff, but I'm always, anytime I get an MFJ thing, um, it's all hand built. And uh, a lot of times you need to double check your solder joints and stuff. Just make sure there's not anything loose or et cetera in there. I mean, they do good work and they have great warranty. They stand behind their products, but I've just, in the past, have found sometimes they're, Siren can be a little bit suspect, so I'm going to go ahead and take the cover off this. That and you guys and me can take a look at what's actually inside of this unit. By the way, this is uh, up to 300 watts is what this are, is rated to. Okay, guys, check it out. Hopefully you're getting a good view of that. Here's what's inside of it, which is pretty much what's in all tuners for the most part. You got your capacitance bank here. You got all your relays, so they switch in and out and get different combinations of capacitors. Same with your uh, your chucks. I always call them chucks. Uh, that can be uh, conductors. Uh, I, I, what if I was? I'm back in the day when I had an instructor. All chucks are inductors, but not all inductors are chucks, basically. So I always call any type of uh, ferret metal with a wrap around it a choke, but it could be an inductor instead. But anyway, you have your what I'll call choke bank here, and of course it has all the combinations you can do between the different, you know, basically lengths of wire that you get your resonance from. It's got a ballon back here for if you want to uh, use uh, an unbalanced line. It's, you know, it's probably a 75 ohm ballon or 300 ohm. Yeah, it's probably a 300 ohm that balances it to, uh, to 50 ohm. Anyway, I mean, that's your ballon. It's probably a 9 to 1 ballon. I'm not sure, but it doesn't matter. But anyway, that's just for if you're using like letter wire or uh, non-coaxial wire. It's not balanced. And of course you have your uh, two connectors on the back, which we'll go over the whole back here. You got your balance line, you got your unbalanced line, which uh, I think balance line would be 75 and that would be 300 for the unbalanced. And then of course you have your transmitter input. It also has a remote port, so you have a serial port, so you can hook this up to a to computer. And uh, I'm not sure what all you could do. I'm not going to hook it up to computer. I need to find out what exactly you can control through the uh, remote port, but I'm guessing probably all the stuff that's on the front of it you can do from, from your computer. Which is not really necessary with the way I got my bench set up. I mean, I literally it's a foot away from me just to push the button. I'll probably have it in auto tune all the time anyway, so it'll just tune to the deal. And of course, then you got your two connectors on the back. Hopefully, I'm not rambling on too much here. Construction wise, it looks really, really good. Um, obviously, this is your probably your these two right here, your logic. That's as far as your memory, as far as your auto tune and everything else. Obviously, that's your uh, front feed for uh, all your controls and your meters and etc. Of course, your meters are over here, which I do notice that on the solder on these, it looks good, but man, that wire is awful close to the to the bottom. I think I might take and turn it off and not kind of bend those wires up a little bit. They're awful close to the to the to the ground or the to the shield. They're not touching, obviously, but they're sure awful close. That's kind of one of the things I always like to watch. I can almost trim those off a little bit even, but uh, looks like a good solder joint. Just just a little housekeeping I might do in there. Other than that, um, everything looks nice. Looks like there's where your calibration pots are at. Um, there's your input feed. That's probably there using to uh, sample the uh, RF coming in. Uh, is there anything else I can see on here? Um, this one does not have a built-in dummy load, which my other one did, which I kind of wish it did have a built-in dummy load. It's probably the one feature that this one doesn't have that I wish it did have 
I do wish it had a had a built-in dummy load, but I'll uh, I'll reroute it around because I always like having a dummy load. Obviously, to tune my radios or set the power on them, I switch over to dummy load before I go to transmitting, just out of respect of the, the airways. But anyway, other than that, I'm not obviously not going to pull the main board out. No reason to do that. I just wanted to make sure there wasn't nothing loose in here and and how the solder work looks. And it actually solder works really good. Uh, like I said, the only thing I see a little bit suspect is I might push those wires up a little bit. They're just kind of close to the back cabinet but other than that I cannot see any problems with any of the solder work it looks actually really good I'm, I'm sure this has probably been tested and I have nothing to worry about but I like getting into my I remember back in Christmas in the, in the day I couldn't help myself when I was a kid I guess I've always kind of had an engineer type mentality I, I would get a new toy and I couldn't stand but not take it apart and figure out how it worked I uh, you know it took till I was about 20 years old that I learned how to put stuff back together right <laughs> Anyway, um, I'm digressing. Let me go ahead and get this lid on here. Um, that's kind of an overview of the, the 993B MFJ. Uh, we'll go ahead and I'm going to do another uh, video coming up that I'm going to have it in line with all my equipment and we'll kind of go through and see how she uh, performs. So anyway, guys, uh, have a great day out there. This is Electron Man. If you haven't already, please uh, like this video and subscribe to my channel and help me build this um, information channel I have on electronics.